So unless you guys have been living under a rock these past couple of weeks, you know that Russia and Ukraine, they're going at it right now. There's a lot of geopolitical tension and a lot of people are getting scared. They're like, oh, should I sell my stock? Should I stay in my stocks? Ride it out. Should I buy more? In this video, I'm going to break down hard core data statistics as to what goes on historically speaking during geopolitical tensions like we're experiencing right now with Russia and Ukraine and we're also going to break down what the markets have been doing here throughout the course of today in this video so hit the like button subscribe if you guys find value and get yourself five stocks from Moomoo link down below literally free money guys all you have to do is deposit at least $100 which you then could get back later on and you get up to five stocks each of which could be valued up to 3500 bucks linked right down below so let's get into it guys since my previous video today the markets have straight up been downtrending you guys can see right now spy is down 1.3 percent the russell's down 1.2 same with the nasdaq and we have the dow down the most which usually isn't the case but today it is the dow's down 1.6 percent we have the vix up over nine percent and we have gold up over nine 1900 an ounce still and silver's up above 24 bucks an ounce and silver's up about one percent while gold is up a quarter of a percent so clearly there's volatility people are still going into the metals right now and the overall uh, risk on assets being the stocks out there right a lot of these are going down today and it seems like spy is bouncing momentarily if you guys take a look here on the five-day chart and on the intraday chart it seems like spy is bouncing above 425 we are seeing a bit of an intraday rally here well uh, but the question is will this last or is it a bull trap and at this point it's too early to tell but later on in the uh, day today we have another hour 20 minutes we'll figure out what ended up happening and of course we're going to cover that in my next video which should be coming out here um, in a couple of hours so markets are selling off still spies bouncing off for critical support which if it breaks under 425 guys it's going to be a bloodbath and we had triple q already break under a critical support we took the lows out this morning we hit 332 so a lot of people are freaking out markets are red a lot of people it's a it's a psychological thing right they see their their net worth their stocks all their money, they have an emotional tie to this money, you know, it's going down, it's losing value, and instead of treating it as a discount, I'm not saying all stocks are at a discount now, but I'm just saying, just just, just work with me here, right? As, as, as they're seeing stocks go down a bit, instead of looking at it as cheaper to buy these stocks, they're freaking out and panicking, right? It's not like when you go to a store, you see a, clo uh, a, piece, of, a piece of clothing, right? 30% off you want to buy it the stock market's the opposite right and that's what's going on right now people are freaking out but I want to I want to try and show you some hardcore statistics as to why you should not be freaking out guys that this is normal during geopolitical tensions and we'll see how quickly the markets have rebounded so let me uh, pop this up give me a second let me make my face a bit smaller there we go so what we're looking at right here and I know it's probably not the uh, the the clearest picture but if you guys can see it which I'm sure you can this is showing you a list of geopolitical events and stock market reactions and this is straight from LPL financial that's the source so if you guys want to look this up I guess just type in uh, geopolitical events and stock market reactions LPL financial I personally found this uh, I actually found this on Investopedia so this shows a lot of these market shock events throughout time and how much the S&P 500 went down in one day and the total drawdown as you guys can see in the third column here and then the fourth column shows how many calendar days it took for the S&P 500 to bottom and then calendar days to recovery right that's the fifth column right here so we have a bunch of different you know uh, big market shock events the I Iranian general who was killed in an airstrike you guys can see actually there's question marks here for that so ignore that one we have Saudi Aramco drone strike that was in 2019 we had a one day drawdown of 0.3 percent total drawdown of four percent it took 19 days for the S&P to bottom calendar days and it took 41 days for it to get to recovery status we had the North Korea 
missile crisis in 2017. One day S&P dropped 0.1%, total drawdown 1.5%. It took 14 days to bottom, and it took about 36 days for an overall recovery. And if you guys just take a look down this list, we're not going to read off every single one of these. Actually, let's see the Kennedy assassination one. That's probably interesting. Kennedy assassination, 2.8% drop in one day, which to me, that's crazy. I feel like if the president got assassinated, I mean, the market's got to drop 10% in a day. I mean, come on. <laughs> but it only went down 2.8%. That was in 63, a long, long time ago, right? And the total drawdown was 2.8%. It, it bottomed in one day, according to this uh, data right here. So that's pretty interesting right there. And what else? The 9-11 attacks. Let's see those. This is more. Okay, that makes sense. 4.9% one day drop. 11.6% total drawdown. It took 11 days to bottom. So the stock market did get destroyed during that time period like I mean, it makes sense, right? Like expected. And it took 31 days to recover. So the moral of the story is right now, this is one of those events, market shock events, uh, historical things that we're going to look back on and be like, okay, that was a point of tension in the world, right? Or maybe it's a nothing burger long time. Who the heck, no uh, long term, right? Who the heck knows? But the moral of the story is if you look at Look at the second half of this, uh, you know, these columns right here, the calendar days to bottom and the calendar days to recovery. Most of these negative events around the world, these geopolitical events, most of these caused markets to drop. And the truth is, by the looks of it, in terms of how many days it took for the markets to bottom, the longest time it took for the market to bottom was the Pearl Harbor attack. It took 143 days for it to bottom, and one day it dropped 4% roughly. Total drawdown was 20%. So Pearl Harbor took 143 days to bottom. That's the, the, the longest, right? 71 days was Iraq's invasion of Kuwait. That was in 1990. It took 71 days to bottom. And then after that, I mean, we're talking 42 days for the Munich Olympics, right? 42 days for that to bottom. 36 days, the Tet Offensive, which I got to look more into that one. Uh, 36 days. And then we had 25 days for the Gulf of Tonkin incident in 1964, other than that, most of this, most of these geopolitical events that cause all this chaos, these, uh, th these, it, the market bottoms in about two, three, four weeks. So, I mean, if you're panicking, how long are we in this? About a couple of weeks at this point. If you're panicking in these markets, you have to ask yourself, why am I doing this? You have to look at historical data, guys. Like this chart, screenshot it, do what you want. You got to look at this and see what happened in previous times in history because a lot of the time we've seen things like this before, right? This is nothing new. History repeats itself, and you have to see what happened last time similar events happened. It's not the same thing. I mean, 9-11 is different from, you know, uh, Pearl Harbor, which is different from, you know, what's going on now, they're all different in nature. They're all tragic, uh, all different in nature. But, but at the end of the day, the root of it is, you know, markets get hit during the time periods of that, but they tend to recover within a couple of weeks, three, four weeks. So that's what we have to keep in mind. And that's why I've been buying. All you guys in my Patreon know I bought a bunch of stocks, ETFs these past couple of weeks. I'm just buying companies that I like. You know, I'm buying more Google. I'm buying more PayPal. I'm, I'm trying to erase the noise, right? I'm buying more Facebook, which is controversial. I got completely roasted on one of my TikToks recently. Uh, but I defended Facebook, guys. Go check me out on TikTok. TikTok at Stasser Fest. We got some buzz on TikTok. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I put some content there pretty much every day, and uh, some of the some of the people on there, man, they're crazy in terms of those comments. So check me out on TikTok. Facebook's what I've been buying, um, and a bunch of other ones as well. Some REITs, you know, Vici, Realty Income for the long term. You know, it's uh, that's what I've been doing. I'm not freaking out. I still have some cash, not a crazy amount of cash, uh, but I still have about 15 percent, 20 percent. You know, I put some to work. And as the markets come down, 
I'm willing to put more to work. You know, that's the way uh, I'm thinking about it. So let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. Make sure to hit the like button and subscribe if you guys want to see more content from me. And make sure to join my Patreon if you want all my buys, sells, call outs, all in real time, morning videos, Discord access, more access to me personally throughout the day. That's on Patreon, link down below. And you guys could also get your five stocks for Moo Moo, free money. All you have to do is use my link, deposit at least $100, and you could get up to five stocks, each of which could be valued up to $3,500. Get your money link down below. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out.